So in this video, we will be covering uh, coloring with clipping masks, which is an easier coloring process, uh, which allows you to like not uh, draw outside of the line or draw outside of the color that you want to, to draw. Now, first of all, this works best uh, with line drawing, as in drawing with line and not painting, meaning it works best to look something like this instead of this, as in they're one with line, one uh, has no lines. So now, now this goes without saying that you must have a line art already waiting, already ready for you to uh, put color in. So let's get to it. Now, first of all, you want to go to the line art layer. As you can see, this thing right here is the line art layer. Now what you want to do is go to the magic wand tool, which is W. Now to click on the parts that have the same color. Now in this case, uh, Rain Mirage, this uh, Pegasus, we're going to have her body, her coat to sort of be selected. As you can see, I select all of these part with the magic wand tool. By the way, it is shift and click so you can add multiple parts in. Now, as you can see, we selected the parts that we want to uh, bound ourselves in. Now, what you want to do next is to add a layer below this original layer, which is what will be our color layer. Next, we want to go to toolbar, select, modify, Expand. Now here you can choose the amount of pixel to expand it by, but in this uh, case for demonstration purposes, I'll just go for two. Now, in case you're wondering, all I did here was just that I s just expanded the selection portion so that when I put color in, there won't be any gaps in. After you make the selection, uh, make sure to go to the layer below it, which is the uh, layer that we're gonna put the colors in. What you want to do is go to the paint bucket tool, which is G, and pick a suitable color for the character or the parts you want to put. Now, remember, as I said in the previous video, background color does matter when you want to uh, pick the color. So make sure the backgrounds are here so that you can use it as a reference to see is it dark or right. This is I'm sure. Let's see which one works best. Actually, no. Yeah, there. This is probably a good mid tone. Actually, no. A bit here. Just uh, try and error, see which one works. Now, it's fine if you don't get the color instantly because you can still change the color by just uh, double clicking the layer that you put color with. As you can see, uh, the layer style is shown. Now, what you can do here is go to color overlay and just change the color here. And, uh, and when you're happy with it, press OK. Uh, and after that, you just right click and Rasterize layer style. I don't know how to read this. I'm not even sure it's correct, but yeah, that's if you want to do it But for now we don't want to do it Because this is actually a perfect color now after we define the color we're going to want to add uh, Shading or sort of like we're going to shade within the defined shape so we don't go out of uh, the line now do you want to have different things to be in different layers because they have different colors so in this case, let's say I want this jacket here to be colored in in another color what i do is i'd select and do the same sort of process but what i'm gonna do here is that i'm gonna add a new layer on a different layer so meaning it's just on a different layer now the reason being is we're going to use clipping mask. So I'm going to show you in a while. So what you want to do next is just add a new layer and check this. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. Another way of doing it is just after you create a new layer, you right click on it and click create clipping mask, which does the same thing. Now what this does is that as you can see, I'm going to start sort of like adding color on top of it. As you can see, it will bound my coloring into the previous layer, meaning no matter how hard I try, I will not be able to color out of it. Meaning I can shade stuff without being afraid of it going outside of the line. Now, the best thing about this is that you can repeat this process on multiple layers. So you can sort of define 
uh, the shadows and light in different layers, like how it did in this picture here. For example, this pink dragon scale, I'm just going to show you what I mean by doing this. As you can see, I have one layer specifically for the shadow, another layer for the highlights of the scale, another for the shadow of the scale, another for uh, the background light or rim lighting, whatever it is. As you can see, I put multiple layers on it so I can edit them individually later on. Which is a good thing to do because if let's say you want to change any color, let's say we want uh, to have a different highlight, all you gotta do is just double click it and just go to color overlay and you can change the color however you want. As you can tell, this is a really useful thing to learn because well, it makes your life way simpler. You don't have to think too much about uh, how to fill in the color within the line and you don't have to worry about too much of like uh, making sure the color stays in the line and you get to control the color afterwards. So it, this uh, does not work with this kind of painting because there is no sort of line for you to uh, make a border with, which you can still do it, but for painting, I recommend you not. So if it's a line art drawing, it's a really useful tool uh, for you to use. On a side note, if you are to define the shape as in a solid shape with the clipping mask, and you want to sort of alter the color inside the clipping mess, what you can do is go to here and click this one right here. Uh, it's called transparent pixel lock. Uh, I just call it pixel lock. So what it does is that if you lock it, what will happen is, as I will demonstrate, is that it will confine your drawing into this space only that you're locked in when you do lock it. So you can see, uh, even though I'm on top of this uh, clipping mask and I'm supposedly able to color in whatever underneath the shape, it still confines it in the shape. Now this is useful in some cases where you want to gradient the shading, but you don't necessarily want to break the shape of the shadow. So that's a good thing to note. I hope this has been informative. I hope this has helped you and understand more about how to do some kind of stuff. And I guess uh, happy drawing. Go ahead and share this video to someone who might uh, benefit from this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And like always, leave a like if you like the video. Drop a sub if you want to see more of these content. And check down the description below where you can find all my social media and my Discord server if you want to join the community. And share this video to a friend if you know someone who might benefit from this. And as always, have a nice day.